大変長らくお待たせいたしました。ただいまより、NTT コミュニケーションズフォーラム2019特別講演を開始させていただきます。NTT コミュニケーションズ株式会社取締役ネットワークサービス部長兼クラウドサービス部長、笹倉修一とのクロストーク、お客様ビジネスを変えるスマートな IoT ソリューションとは、Get Everything Connected Powered by IoT Solution from NTT トランザテルをはじめさせていただきます。ゲストはトランザテル CEO ジャック・ボニペイ様でございます。それでは笹倉さん、よろしくお願いいたします。どうも皆さんこんにちは今日はたくさんお集まりいただきましてこの特別セッションをですねご選択いただきまして本当にありがとうございますそして日頃私どものサービス私の担当してますサービスもたくさんご利用いただきまして本当にありがとうございますさてクラウド化がどんどん進展してデジタル化がデジタライゼーション進展するその中でデータの利活用というところに着目をしましてまあ、データ利活用のプラットフォームを構築してお客様の DX イネブラになりたいと1年前に庄司がこの NTT コムフォーラムで宣言をいたしまして約1年が経ちました私どものですねネットワークもかつての拠点と拠点を結んでトラフィックをお運びするという考えからさまざまなデバイスやですねクラウドのサービスも含めてそういったものをデータと捉えてデータを全体でエンドツーエンドでマネージメントするとそういう考え方に切り替えて行ってまいりました昨年の宣言からですねすでにクラウドとネットワークの部隊は一体で運用とか開発を考えていこうと第一弾の成果としまして今回も発表させていただきました FIC フレキシブルインターコネクトこんなものも出してきましたがそういうことでですね7月からですねこの事業の責任者も、まあ、一本化ということでこのように至ってます、えー、このスマートワールドスマートスマートワールドをですねスマートデータプラットフォームで実現していくといったときに、まあ、データの収集蓄積といえばやはり IoT が欠かせないと思いますこの IoT のデータの収集、まあ、そういった分野におきましたですね今日はどんなことが実際に起きているのかということを、まあ、今般、えー、NTT グループにジョインしてもらいましたフランスのトランザテル、えー、創業者で、えー、CEO の、えー、ジャックに今日は、えー、来てもらってますので彼からいろんな話を聞いてみたいと思いますそれじゃあジャックどうぞじゃあ、ジャック、一言どうぞ。I only know one sentence in Japanese: O meni kakadete kowei です。素晴らしい。<笑>うん、ありがとうございます。えー、それではですね、最初にあのジャックの話を聞く前に、少し私の方から、えー、なんで私どもがですね、トランザテル、ジャックと一緒になりたくてなったかという慣れ初めをですね、少しお話を。したいいいなという,ふうに思いますこのスマートデータプラットフォームの中でですねこの eSIM エンベレット SIM とか組み込み SIM っていいますけれどもこの領域のパートナーをですねグローバルで展開できる人を私は探してましていろんな方とお会いをしてお話をしてきましたこの IoT コネクトモバイルっていうサービスをですねもうすでに並行していくつかのお客様と香港で POC などやらせていただいてもうすでに始めていたんですけども、まあ、強力なパートナーが必要だと、えー、eSIM エンベレット SIM はですねあのご案内の通り、まあ、ここにちょっと、えー、一番あの、えー、代表的な特徴が書いて、えー、あの示させていただいてますけども、あのー、国をまたがってもですね、えー、最適な、まあ、キャリアとかですね通信状況、えー、あるいは価格面でそのじばじばで、まあ、しっかりとしたモバイルキャリアをですね回線を切り替えたいと思うんですけども、えー、この SIM をわざわざ入れ替えることなくですねこれが遠隔であったりあるいはアプレットで自動的にですね切り替えることができると
さらにはポータルや API で離れてあるこの仕込まれた新聞がですねこれを途中で利用を止めたりとかですね切り替えをしたりとかまあそういうことも含めてできるこういったあの特徴を持ったのが e s i m でありますそしてですね我々このグローバル IoT 欠かせないものとして我々はデータを格納するクラウドデータセンター世界中にあります IoT のプラットフォームも徐々に用意をしていますそしてグローバルのネットワーク世界190カ国リージョン以上でですねネットワークを持ってますのでそこに対するモバイルの素晴らしいアクセスということでこのモグローバルモバイルの領域でトランゾテルに出会ったわけなんですけども私最初はですねここの eSIM の世界中をつなげるパートナーを探したんですけどもこのジャックと会って話をしてたらばジャックそんな世界中にいろんなモバイルキャリアと交渉して直接つながってるけどそんなことは問題じゃないんだと僕らが何をやってるかというとモバイルコネクティビティソリューションだということなんですね。そのいろいろあるデータを集めた後にお客様はこのデータをどこに届けたいかどう届けたいかどのように保管したいかどう使いたいかとまあそういうのが非常に重要になってくるわけですけどもそういったまさにエンドエンドでこのデータをですねどのようにマネージとしていくかということにそういうビジョンを持って彼はサービスをしているということでもう一気にこの真ん中のところあこれもう本当に考えが一緒だよねと。いうことで、まあ、私はぜひ、まあ、ジャックとトランザテルと一緒になろうよというふうにラブコールを送ったんですけどもなんでジャックが受けてくれたかはよく分からないんですけども、えー、そういうことで今ここで一緒にやっていますそしてあのもう一つトランザテルにこう行くうちにですね一つ分かりましたトランザテルってすごくあの日本のことが好きな社員の人がいっぱいいるんですね。それで一番最初にうちの社長の庄司がトランザテルに行った時にですねその時の写真なんですけどもこんなのがですね<笑>用意されていて、えー、非常に、あのー、ウェルカムという感じでありましてこれって、あのー、意外とこういう相性ケミストリーで大事だなとでこれから日本のお客様にですねグローバルでサービスを提供していく時にこう日本のカルチャー日本のことをよく理解した人と一緒に行くんだらすごくいいかなと思いましてもうますます一緒になりたいと。いうことで一緒になりました。ジャックはなんで NTT グループと一緒になろうと思ったんですか。I think there are several aspects to that.、Um, I think we always had an attraction for for Japan. So if I start with one of my co-founder Romain, for example, he spent three years in Japan and his wife is Japanese. Uh, and uh, we founded Transatel together. Myself, I've started my career in the satellite industry and had the opportunity to come to Japan in 1990. was working with Nisho Iwa, who educated me a little bit about doing business in Japan.、Uh, and that was one of my first business e x p e r i e n c e、um, And we launched also 12 years ago in,、uh, in Europe a service called、uh, Roketai that was dedicated to the Japanese people living in France. So, we had a long history. So,、uh, also、uh, six months ago, we had a partnership with、uh, Vio for connected PC. So, we were the only non Japanese company which were a mobile operators in Japan.、Uh, so, we had lots of things in our past which was making be together, I would say. So, it was kind of an obvious thing. And I think, the, in terms of strategic match, there is a perfect match. Um, we, we provide these worldwide connectivity solutions, but we only provide connectivity when entity can provide so much more things around that, and also entity has the capacity to push those solutions worldwide. So it makes lots of sense for me. Thank you very much. So, now, let's talk about the idea of the way in which the IoT solution is in Europe. ジャックにお話をしてもらいたいと思います。ジャックよろしくお願いします。Okay. Okay. Please. So, Transatel is a,、uh, if, if I summarize what we do in, in one sentence, we are a global connectivity solution provider for the cellular business.、Uh, and we do it on two market segments one is MVNO, the other one is IoT. Uh, we started the company 19 years ago 
uh, as in the MVNO business, so as a mobile telephony service provider. An MVNO is a mobile operator who don't have a network, so buy capacity from a network uh, operators, such as in Japan, uh, SoftBank, Entity Locomo, or KDDI. We moved uh, about 10 years ago in the machine-to-machine -machine business working for British Telecom, and then five years ago, we have decided to deploy globally a worldwide data MVNO for the IoT. And since February 28, this year, we are part of the entity group to make uh, this business a much bigger business with entity. Uh, today, you can say that we have two business activity. Our traditional business is in the MVNO business. This is a, a, a very profitable business, so you can say that it is our cash cow. Uh, we are the number one in Europe to MVNE, Mobile Virtual Network Enabler. That means we provide turnkey solutions for people who want to become MVNO in Europe. We manage about 80 MVNO, so if I just give a few examples which may be relevant for you. Uh, China Telecom, the Chinese operators, are, is MVNO in UK and in France to target the Chinese population in France and UK. And we also work with China Mobile for the UK. But we have many other customers in, um, in Europe. Um, the second business we do, which is the new business, as I said, it's a new business that we started five years ago, is a worldwide data in Vienna for the IoT. We already have some references that you can see, and I will come back on those references. This uh, worldwide solution for IoT cellular connectivity already works in more than 140 countries, and I will give a bit more details. Uh, so if I focus on this business, by the way, do you know where it is? Where is the picture? It's in Paris. <laughs> and you can actually see our office on the left and we share the office with Sony. So Sony and Transatel, we are in the same building. So there is a little bit of perfume of Japan when you come to the Transatel office. So in IoT, we have three market segments. The first one is laptop and tablet. Um, there is something which is very strange in, in the laptop tablet business, is that more than 95% of the laptop and tablet are not connected to internet thanks to cellular connectivity. Most of the people, when you, when most of the people, when they travel outside of the office or outside uh, their country, they use Wi-Fi. Now, there is a problem with Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is not secure. So, if you come to France, to the United States, to Africa, do you always want to trust the Wi-Fi? I don't think it's a good idea if you work for corporations. Now, you can use your phone, but first, to use your phone to get connectivity is not practical. It uses a battery. And if you use it outside of your country, outside of Japan, for you, then it's very expensive. That's totally crazy. Now, we are pushing and we are uh, having partnership with uh, OEMs, uh, device manufacturer, Vio, Surface Tablet. So if you buy a Surface Tablet anywhere in the world, this comes with an eSIM with a transatel profile. That means you open your device and you are connected. And you are connected in a secure way. So, the benefit is productivity, because it's much more efficient, and security. And uh, we think that it's something that we should develop and deploy uh, globally with NTT, and that together we can make it very big and, and strong. The second market segment is automotive. We have been selected by FCA, Fiat Chrysler Automotive, which is the number six worldwide car manufacturer, to provide connectivity to their cars in Europe. Uh, the service is going to start by the end of October. Uh, we have also been selected by Jaguar Land Rover for the same service in Europe. Uh, we also work, uh, and I will come back more in details uh, on those cases, we are also working for Scania, which is the third worldwide truck manufacturer, and we also work for DAF. Actually, the automotive business is now getting our biggest business in terms of volumes of traffic. The third market segment, we call it industrial IoT, but it could be many more different segments. Um, so one of our big customers is Airbus, I will come back on, on this one. We obviously work with lots of SIM card vendor and, uh, and, and uh, device maker, uh, but I don't have the time. So this is our coverage. So you see that we cover all North America, all Europe, most of Asia, and we still need to work a little bit more for Latin America and Africa, but I hope that by the next summer, we're going to cover almost all Africa and all Latin America. Um, 
We also have infrastructure in US, in Singapore, and in France, because we want to guarantee quality of service and speed of our data and low latency. This is why we have a point of presence with routers or pay gateway in those different countries. And our vision is that we're going to put much more of those pay gateways leveraging on the worldwide NTT LTD infrastructure worldwide. Uh, so basically, if I summarize the key benefit for our customers, so uh, just to give you an idea, FCA, Fiat Chrysler Automotive, Jaguar Land Rover, Airbus, we were shortlisted against Vodafone. So those are free contracts that we steal from Vodafone because before they were working for Vodafone and now they are working with us. Uh, what the customer like is that when you are integrated with Transitel, you have one integration. It's done, and you can deploy globally. That when you are a car manufacturer, you can work with uh, Vodafone for Europe. Then if you want to go to US, you have to integrate with AT&T. If you come to Japan, you have to integrate with NTT Locomo, to uh, China, China, and you come. So it's very complex. We provide one solution for the world. Um, we also, our solution is very open. So basically, the customer can leave us very easy. So our customer are very loyal to us. They stay, but they stay because they are happy, not because they are locked by a technical solution or by an exclusivity contract. And because we are entrepreneur, because our DNA is innovation, we also make everything which is possible so that our customer can innovate and differentiate versus competition. Uh, not going too much to, uh, into the details, but all platforms allow to manage multiple services, whether it's services to manage a fleet of vehicles, uh, services to manage insurance, uh, pay-as-you-drive insurance for an insurance company, or whether you want to manage the end user by providing Wi-Fi on board and to manage the end user as a customer. So whether it's a B2B or B2C, our platform is capable to manage all those different kind of business models. Um, just uh, some uh, use case, uh, Fiat Chrysler Automotive, so if you buy a Jeep and a high-end Alfa Romeo in Europe starting at the end of a month, you're going to have free years connectivity. Uh, the car manufacturer is going to use this connectivity for software update. As you know, in a car, you have lots of software, so you want to be able to do software update at any time, especially if it's critical software update, because what you don't want to do as a car manufacturer is to call back the car at the car dealer to do the software update. So it's much more efficient and discreet to do over the air software update. We also uh, can provide Wi-Fi on board uh, to, the, um, to the customer. Um, and uh, these solutions that uh, we provide for Europe, the objective is to deploy for Asia Pacific, including Japan. And after when we have deployed to Asia Pacific, we're going to fight very hard to win the contract against AT&T. Against AT and I think that we should be able to, gather to, to win such a contract. Another one is Airbus. So Airbus is a, is a very interesting case. They have uh, launched Skywaz. Skywaz is a predictive maintenance service for the airlines. That means that each time the plane is landing somewhere in, on Earth, the, as soon as the is on the ground, the flight information are uploaded in the cloud, and then uh, the cloud computing can decide whatever action needs to be done for the maintenance of the planes. Airbus has selected Palantir, the US company for artificial intelligence, Amazon Web Service for cloud computing, and Transatel for cellular connectivity. And one of our competitive advantage was our capacity to exactly match uh, Airbus needs. Uh, Jaguar Land Rover, which is another uh, customer uh, of us, uh, very similar to uh, Fiat Chrysler, uh, Wi-Fi on board, software update, uh, capacity to deploy globally. Uh, another one which is very interesting, I think especially in Japan, is Como. Como is a subsidiary of FCA, Fiat Chrysler Automotive. This is actually for machine tools. So now we provide the SIM cards for the machine tools so that FCA can do the, um, the predictive maintenance of a machine tool. And all solutions work globally worldwide. Uh, Vio. Uh, I, and three years ago, I used to come a lot in Japan to meet all the, um, the Japanese OEM for laptop and tablet. And Vio, they started with us. So on some Vio computer, uh, you have a Transdel SIM cards, And we provide a revenue share to Vio. So not only you have one gigabyte free when you buy the Vio computer, but also we, when the customer is buying more connectivity, we give revenue share to the uh, OEM 
uh, which uh, is actually very good for his business model because not only is making money on the hardware, but he's also making money on the service and basically trying to imitate what Apple is doing by doing business with, um, with uh, hardware and with service. Arigato gozaimasu. <laughs> Thank you. Merci beaucoup. So, so there are now, Jack, a lot of different examples of the story. But here, I'm going to look at a few examples and look at the questions I'm going to ask from my side. So, the first question is a little bit more detailed. I'm going to look at the first question. えー、私は一番印象に残ったのはこのエアバスですねこの非常にあのヨーロッパの<笑>有数の企業に対して、まあ、あのいわゆるキャリアとかそういうところじゃなくてトランザテルが、まあ、この、えー、ビジネスを勝ち取ったわけですけども、まあ、どういったところが、まあ、そのトランザテルがこのエアバスを獲得できたポイントだというふうにジャックは思いますか、yes. um... First, in our final offer, we were 20% more expensive than Vodafone. So we choose, they still decided to choose us. First motivation, they used to work with Vodafone, and they don't really like Vodafone because Vodafone really want to tie to a customer, and you are like this with Vodafone. Uh, so they wanted to have freedom from Vodafone. Um, and also, because we are an MVNO, we can work with any mobile operators in the world, so they like the capacity that we can select the network and choose the best network in any airport in the world. Secondly, as a matter of fact, Airbus is buying airtime from us, but we give them the options to negotiate directly with mobile operators. So for example, for Japan, if Airbus wants to have a direct relationship with Entity Docomo from a contractual standpoint, they can negotiate with Entity Docomo, they agree on a price, then they pay me a fee, then I can make sure that the service runs on Entity Docomo network. I got a fee paid by Airbus, and Airbus can pay directly Entity Docomo, and maybe I don't even know the price between Entity Docomo and Airbus. So today, Airbus for Japan buying airtime from Transatel, but they can have a choice to negotiate separately if they want. Um, thirdly, uh, Vodafone was proposing Vodafone solutions. Me. I was proposing an Airbus solution, especially regarding the, uh, you know, these slides about, um, alors, hop, doesn't work, or maybe I don't want to use it. I want to just to go backward. Yeah, no. Okay, it doesn't matter. Back? Back, yeah. Ah, okay, it works. This one? Again, more? More. To the free point of presence. This one? No, more. Yes. So, the commitment we have with Airbus is that you know the planes fly globally, and uh, when the planes land in Singapore, you don't want to use the pay gateway, the routers in Paris. You want to have a local pay gateway, a local routers to optimize the, uh, the the transfer of data from the plane to the cloud. So, uh, we have three point of presence today in New York. Paris and Singapore. So we have a direct connect with Amazon Web Service in those three cities. And we have a commitment with Airbus, and that was part of a contract when Vodafone doesn't provide that. And we have a commitment with uh, Airbus that whenever they have enough traffic in a given region, we're going to deploy globally, uh, we're going to deploy locally, I mean, uh, a pay gateway. <coughs> and the beauty of a partnership between NTT and Transatel is as before today, I can tell you it was a, lots of work for us to deploy our pay gateway in New York or in Singapore because most of the people are based in Paris. Now, with uh, Entity, that's going to be much easier. If we have to deploy a pay gateway in Australia or in South Africa or in Latin America, we can do it much easier, in a much more easy way, much quicker, much efficient. So, uh, and my vision is going, we're going to have 10 or 20 pay gateways across the world, especially when 5G will be coming, uh, where we, we will need much more pay gateway. So I will think that this, Capacity to adapt to Airbus needs was really the, the things that they wanted to work with us 
when in the same time we were 20% more expensive at this time. Now we, we, we managed to reduce price, leveraging on the fact that we have with contract with Airbus, we were in a position to renegotiate with all the mobile operators across the world to get much better pricing. あの、ま、あの、トランザテルが提供できたというのもすごく大きなポイントだったのかなというふうに私は思っています。じゃあ、2つ目のポイントに行きたいと。スクエッションに行きたいんですけど、次はですね、FCA、え、フィアットクライスラー様
宇部市の新聞入れるともう世界中どこ行ってもあんまり気にしないでですねパッと開けるとつながるという状況になってますこれ非常にいいと思うんですけどもこの Always Connected PC で NTT グループとまあトランスペルと次にどんな展開をしようかということでちょっとジャックのプランを聞かせてください。Yes, we, we have developed, so we have launched a new brand, which is UBG, that you can go on www.ubg.com. If you go on this website, you can、uh, get an eSIM that you can use on your iPhone X, on your laptop and tablet if you have an eSIM. You can al also get a physical SIM card. And this, with this service, you can have local connectivity worldwide. So, this is good for、uh, consumers, for individuals, for professionals, but the market is really on the enterprise segment. So, a long t r a n s a t e l that was difficult for us to attack the enterprise segment worldwide.、Uh, and that's something that's a great synergy we, now we can have with NTT because now the NTT sales force worldwide、uh, has the power to、uh, distribute what we call the name code is UBG for business, but actually we are not going to sell it under the UBG branding. Although, if you go to UBG for business, you have a video which explains the concept on the internet. But we're going to do under the NTT brand.、And We are already talking to one of the NTT affiliates in the US uh, called now, uh, it's an X Dimension Data, it's NTT Lifecycle Management. They have a very nice tool to help an enterprise to manage all the lines, all the data traffic with each of the SIM cards. And it's also a very nice tool to help c o m p a n y to manage telecom cost. So we are working with them to provide a, a full turnkey solution. That, uh, that not only, that first, that the NTT LTD can use internally. So, hopefully, in a couple of months, we're going to have a, a big part of a mobile workforce of NTT LTD, which is going to use UBG but under the NTT brand,、um, and, uh, and be able to、uh, commercialize it to all the customers of NTT across the world. And I think the value proposition is not going to be. I just sell you connectivity, and it's a cheap connectivity, and you can bypass roaming so that you can reduce your cost. Yes, that's one thing. But also, maybe the most important one is about security. And I come back to what I said earlier. When you travel outside of your office, when you travel outside of your country, you tend to use Wi Fi in a hotel, and that's bad. And now, with such a solution, because our cost structure is low, Because the solution is secure with a dedicated APN, we can make sure, and the,、uh, the head of security in a company can say, now Wi Fi is forbidden, you only use cellular. And we can make sure that all the cellular connectivity doesn't go on public internet, but is delivered directly to the premise of the enterprise, so that the head of security within an enterprise can apply the same data policy. For someone which is in Bangkok or in New York using cellular connectivity or in the premises using Wi Fi. So, for me, it's a global cell, it's a solution cell that NTT can push now on the market in a couple of months when we will be ready. Mobile security for the workforce and connectivity. So, it's a productivity tool and a security tool. And altogether, I think we, we should be quite successful in, in that. <laughs> 私もあ,のあ,るある国のある、まあ、ちゃんとしたホテルなんですけどね w i f i 使って会社アクセスしようかなと思って、えー、パスワード分かんなくてフロントに「パスワードは何ですか?」って聞いたらば「あなたのパスワードはあなたのパスポートの番号です」っていうふうに、えー、言われた国がありましてですね、まあ、どことは言わないんですけどもまあ,あのいろいろ日本にいると分からないこともいろいろあるのかなというふうに思いました。はいといととうことで、えーお話をさせていただきましたけれどもこの、えー、コミュニケーションズがトランザテルと一緒になることによりまして、えー、モバイルコネクティビティのソリューション、まあ、大きく広げていきたいと思っております、えー、今日ですねスマートデータプラットフォームのこの大きな中でですね、まあ、あのいろんなポートフォリオがあって分かりにくいと思うんですけどもこの下半分はですね今日お話ししたところで、えー、一元的にデータを収集し蓄積をしまあ、蓄積した先がまあ我々の ECL であれ AWS であれ Azure であれまあこの上のですねさらにデータプラットフォームの今回もご紹介させていただいてます i p a s s ですとか i q u a t r o とかですねまあそういったものでさらにこれを加工していただいてまたそのデータをセキュアに端末や
デバイスに戻していくと、まあ、こういったソリューションを今後ともですねしっかり進めていきたいと思いますのでぜひいろいろご相談をいただければと思いますということであっという間にお時間が経ってしまいましたこちらでこのセッションは終わりたいと思うんですけどもオールインワンということで最後にジャックからもう一言日本のお客様に。Um, yeah, I hope that Japan and France will be at the final of a World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much.